history preserved. It is what makes Niagara-on-the-Lake one of the region's most beautiful towns. But it's also that history that taps into a dark side. Only war ever fought on Canadian soil. This was the capital of Canada during that time. And the amount of dark and, and bad energy that that left behind, it left an impression on the town. An impression that has also given it the title of Canada's most haunted town. The ones that you see and the ones you know about would include the Angel Inn. Uh, it was a Captain Colin Swayze, the famous British soldier who haunts that place. He was murdered in the basement, as well the Prince of Wales Hotel and Molly Maguire in, in room 207, who still remains, as well the courthouse, which is probably the most noticeable, impressive historic building in the entire town. Those ghost stories he mentioned here in the Angel Inn, the spot where Captain Swayze was to meet his lover and warn her of the pending American raid. He was bayoneted as he hid in a barrel in the wine cellar. Believers say his spirit still walks these halls. The Prince of Wales Hotel, the ghost of another War of 1812 victim, is said to remain. Molly Maguire was mistakenly killed by an American soldier. Her ghost is said to still be there, in room 207, awaiting her husband's return. And up the street to the courthouse, where strange occurrences have been reported. A cleaning woman said one night she heard loud knocking and pounding coming from one of the old cells, only to find it empty. Those are the landmarks, the ones we know about, but it's amazing. Like I mentioned, when you open the floodgates, we even get the uh, more unknown locations coming through. Daniel Camerlato conducts ghost walks through the town, and there are plenty of ghost stories. Like here on Queen Street at the Royal George Theatre. It's the oldest theater in Niagara-on-the-Lake, and uh, it's quite interesting. The ghosts in there are a little bit more new than what you would expect from a haunted building, uh, but the energy is, is palpable. Daniel says there are two ghosts. One is named Jeffrey. He's a man who passed away just a few decades ago in his early 40s from a terminal illness. He was a lighting technician, and he continues to show his light to visitors even today. Now he doesn't want to be behind the scenes like he was in life. Now he wants to be front and center. Sometimes he's up in the balcony, other times on the stage. The lights are coming down in the house and the curtain is coming up. And there's one split second before the theater goes dark that a man is standing in the middle of the stage. He just appears out of nowhere and he's staring at the crowd. The other one, her name is Nancy. She wasn't uh, behind the scene. She was right out front and center. She was an actress. Nancy was known for her acting ability, but also as being a popular mentor and comfort for young actors trying to get over their jitters. But she would sneak up behind them, and when the cue came, just in case they hesitated, she would bump them with her hip. So, so hard was the Nancy bump, it thrusted the actor onto the stage and they started their lines and they felt good after that. And then around the corner is the Trisha Romance Gallery, where looks can certainly be deceiving. The house, uh, how can I explain? I mean, it looks like Barbie's dream house. A dream house with a dark side. A female ghost who has been seen roaming the halls. She tends to reach out to the guests on the tour. Manifesting mainly in troubles with their technology. What I've seen mostly though, batteries are drained from full to nothing. I've also seen where they failed in one image repeated 13 times on the camera. I've also seen where one image appears, yet everything else on the camera was wiped. And one gentleman with a manual camera took a picture of the house. But when the image appeared, the camera had zoomed itself in to show just this window. 